good morning students uh, how are you all i hope you are fine uh, my name is mrs teresa and i'm going to teach you english uh, chapter 1 now uh, in the previous video we had uh, talked about uh, grandparents then we had talked about uh, family i had showed you some family pictures then i had asked you questions about yourself also and uh, we had also talked about cameras if you remember and i had asked you to find out and get some information regarding cameras from your parents means i had asked you to find out that uh, what are the advanced technologies uh, that are come up uh, in the present times uh, in the use of cameras i hope uh, you have uh, taken some interest in it and i hope you must have uh, got some information regarding cameras and in the previous uh, previous video even i had given you two activities the first activity was uh, to ask certain questions to your grandparents i hope you must have done the activity and you must have enjoyed it a lot and the second activity i had asked you uh, to paste the picture of your grandparents and uh, i had asked you some questions with options so i told you that i will give you the answer in the next video so right now i will uh, give you the correct answers so we will just see the slide okay so i had asked in the activity 2 to paste a picture of your grandfather or grandmother in a notebook and answer the questions given so first question which i asked you was their clothes are different from clothes worn in the present time and i had given you two options that is true or false and the correct answer is true of course their clothes which are in the photograph of the olden days are very different from the clothes that are worn today then in the second question i had asked you the background is clear or unclear and the correct answer is unclear because in those days in black and white photographs the background was not very clear it was unclear and uh, uh, it was very uh, it used to look very foggy if you see right now the old photographs they look very foggy and unclear so uh, right now if you see the old photographs you will find that the background is unclear so the correct answer is unclear then the third question what i asked you was the picture quality is good or not good of course the olden days pictures were taken out with olden days cameras which were not very advanced so those days the picture quality was also not uh, very good as the quality of the picture is today today the cameras are very advanced uh, and of very high resolution so the picture qualities of today's photographs are very very good but in those days the picture quality was not good so these are the answers to the activities uh, activities that i uh, gave you in the previous uh, video that is the previous part of this lesson now uh, today we will uh, do the next part of chapter 1 today we are going to do the next part of chapter 1 and uh, in this uh, particular uh, part we are going to uh, study the lesson that is we are going to Uh, read the lesson and understand the lesson right but before you read the lesson and i give you the explanation and i give you the summary of the story uh, i would like uh, to explain you the hard words first hard words means the words which are given in the word body section they are the difficult words and if you know the difficult words it will be very easy for you to understand the story which i will tell you later on so first of all uh, i will uh, like to give you some information some knowledge about the hard words so that you get an idea okay so this is the uh, second part of our lesson the photograph okay now word body you all know word body word body means a difficult words which are given in your textbook it is given in a box 
and it is called word body so all the hard words all the difficult words of the lessons are given in this section now as you can see the first hard word is rummaging you must be wondering what is the meaning of rummaging okay rummaging means searching unsystematically and untidily through something okay now uh, again i will just read out the meaning of the word rummaging it is searching unsystematically and untidily through something now uh, when you are searching through a pile of something means you just uh, make a mess suppose if you want a book and there is a pile of book and you are in a hurry and you just search unsystematically you just make a mess so that is called rummaging now suppose you want some uh, some clothes to wear and you are not getting it in your cupboard right so you just make a mess in your cupboard just to search that clothes you are in a hurry and you want some clothes to wear but you just make a mess and you are just searching unsystematically and untidily in a hurry so that is called rummaging when you just uh, search something through a pile and uh, you just search it untidily you make a mess around that is called rummaging so in the story also a boy will uh, search something let us unsystematically and untidily he is uh, searching through a box in the box so that is called rummaging so did you understand what is rummaging okay now we will go through the next slide now the second one is higher looms now higher looms means what higher looms means articles handed down from generation to generation you can even note it down in your notebook if you find it difficult to remember so higher looms means articles handed down from generation to generation now uh, there are many old things kept in all the houses means uh, even in your family your parents must have kept uh, some precious things uh, which are very old so which are given by their grandparents and which are given by their great grand uh, mother or great grandfather so there are certain things which you don't just throw it out you just keep it carefully uh, because those things are very precious or those things are very good so these things which are handed down from generation to generation means which are given by our great grandparents to our grandparents then our grandparents will give it to our parents and our parents have also kept it carefully to give it to us so these things are known as higher looms so higher looms are the things which are handed down from generation to generation the things which are precious the things which are kept carefully from uh, many years they are called higher looms understood now we will see the next meaning the third word is attic now attic means what attic means upstairs room for storing unused items you can just note it down if you want attic means upstairs room for storing unused items uh, you can even pause the video and you can write the meaning if uh, you are finding it difficult to write fast so even you can pause the video and you can note down the meaning so that it will be easier for you to write it carefully so attic means upstairs room for storing unused items now uh, in all the houses in all the homes there is a store room where all the old things are kept so that is known as attic like a store room it is a store rooms suppose the things which we are not using which are not uh, in use in our daily life which we hardly use they are kept in a particular room and that is called a store room so where the old things are kept that room is called attic okay where the normally we keep all the unused items they are called store room store rooms but when we keep the old things old unused items where we keep the high looms i explained you in the uh, previous slide high loom high loom means the things which are passed down from generation to generation so the room in which we keep the old things old and unused things that is called attic so did you understand okay now we will see the next word okay the next word is valoped now what is valoped okay valoped means hit now when you hit someone slowly from the back that is called valoped now in this uh, particular lesson the grandmother valoped the young boy so valoped means just give a small hit with your 
hand that is called wallop not uh, not with force just a small hit uh, just a touch of the hand that is called wallop understood so wallop means hit very gently now the next word the next word is disgraceful so what is the meaning of disgraceful okay disgraceful means shameful okay disgraceful means shameful now uh, uh, if you are doing an act which is very shameful then it is called disgraceful like you can say that uh, it was very disgraceful for me to get punished in the class okay so when you are feeling shameful that means it is called disgraceful so instead of using the word shameful you can use disgraceful i felt very disgraceful when the teacher punished me i felt very disgraceful when the students laughed at me understood so disgraceful means shameful now we will see the next word the next word is called deterrent now what is deterrent deterrent means to make the child avoid doing something deterrent means to make the child avoid doing something okay now suppose if your parents don't want you to do something that is called deterrent okay they deter you from going outside they deter you from uh, going uh, out to play okay so deter means uh, when someone is not allowing you to do something that is called deterrent that is called deterrent okay when someone is not allowing you to do something it is called deterrent means if someone uh, stops you from doing something that is called deterrent your parents are deterrent to send you outside your parents are deterrent uh, to give you mobile phones your parents are deterrent to allow you to play video games so did you understand deterrent means if someone is avoiding you from doing something that is called deterrent okay now the next word is despite now what is the meaning of despite despite means in spite of now when you say okay now another word for despite is even though even though i scored full marks i did not stand first in the class even though okay so the other word which you can use for even though is despite of uh, even though i ran fast i could not win the race so despite of uh, running fast i could not win the race so despite means even though understood so this is another word which can be used in the place of even though now the next one squinted now do you know what is the meaning of squinted okay squinted means peered with narrowed eyes now squinted means uh, when you see something very carefully you just make your eyes small when you cannot see something properly and you make your eyes small that is you make your eyes narrow that is called squinted peered with narrowed eyes peered means when you see something carefully with narrowed eyes narrowed eyes means when you just make your eyes small when you cannot see especially the old people uh, you must have seen your grandparents if they cannot see something they will just make their eyes narrow they will make their eyes small and they will see so that is called squinted so squinted means to see with narrowed eyes understood now the next one ruffianly now what is ruffianly rough and violent so when uh, uh, something is rough something is very rough and violent that is called ruffianly this is an uh, this is a word specially used for the naughty children the the boy was very uh, behaving very ruffianly I means suppose if the boy is very violent uh, he is very naughty then you give the use a word ruffianly understood so ruffianly means very rough and violent means uh, not very timid they are not very gentle not very calm okay it is a opposite very rough uh, very active very violent so that is called ruffianly okay rough and tough in other word we can say rough and tough so that is called ruffianly okay now the next one the next one is grab grab is a very easy word you all must be knowing grab means to catch roughly okay so when you just hold a thing when you just uh, ho- want to ca- hold something suppose if i want to hold this mobile i will just hold it gently 
okay but suppose if you want to pull it from someone's hand then you will just grab it okay so when you take something by force it is called grabbing grabbing means you will not take it slowly you will not take it gently suppose if you want to pull it from someone's hand suppose if you want to take it by force okay so that is called grab okay grab means to take something roughly when you take something roughly it is called grab okay now the next one and i think it is the last one okay the next one is dipping now what is dipping dipping means low okay uh my mother spoke in a dipping voice dipping means low voice okay the birds were chirping uh in a dipping tone so dipping means low when something is very low it is called dipping so did you understand so these were the hard words of this particular chapter i have covered all the hard words of this chapter so that when i give you the summary okay it will be very easy for you to understand and what you should do is that you must write all this hard words then only it will be in your mind and you will remember it and in the next video when i show you i will show you an animation that is the story so in that animation also these all hard words are used so you will get a, a recap of all the hard words now for today's activity i will uh, give you something related to the hard words now just see the activity so this is the third activity of your lesson 1 the first two activities i gave in the previous video now what is the activity write down all the words of the bird body section in your notebook with their meanings and learn them so what you have to do is whatever hard words i gave you in this video whatever hard words i showed you in this video you have to write them down in your notebook and if possible you must learn, try to learn them so that uh, your vocabulary will increase and uh you can remember them properly so your activity for this part of the video is that you have to write down all the hard words that is all the words of the word body section and just try to just read it uh, many times so that you can remember it so this was the video for the second part that is the second part of the uh, first lesson so i hope you have enjoyed i hope you have understood do the activity and we will meet in the next video uh with the story and the summary of the lesson thank you very much